Um, welcome to uh, the second part of our look at the combat tracker for uh, Fantasy Grounds. Um, this time we're going to look at NPCs. Um, we saw in the last video how to get the player characters onto the combat tracker um, and we've set that up already and uh, all of the persistent effects that are on the uh, player characters have already been placed. So now we want to look at uh, how we would get uh, uh, our NPCs uh, onto the combat tracker. And uh, there's a couple of ways that uh, this might happen. And the first way is that the DM simply opens the NPCs window and uh, drags, very much like the player characters, uh, drags an NPC onto the combat tracker. Um, now there's a couple of things that you'll notice right away um, and the first is that once uh, an NPC is dragged onto the combat tracker uh, this little icon here which is an extra thing you don't see that for the PCs the PCs are always visible but the NPCs when placed on the in, on the combat tracker for the first time are always placed there invisibly so if we have a look at the uh, player's combat tracker here, we can see that only the players are visible. The uh, cobalt that we just placed onto the combat tracker uh, can't be seen as yet. Uh, so we want to make the NPC visible, and there's a couple of ways we can do this. The first is just to click the little icon underneath the cobalt here. And the second method is to click the eye icon uh, up at the top and this basically uh, shows all the NPCs uh, and this gives you more granular control and uh, you can hide some P NPCs and show others. So if I have a look now at the uh, player's combat tracker we can see that the cobalt is now visible. There is another little button here, um, which is the uh, item identified button, uh, which is a little uh, icon just above the uh, portrait of the or the the uh, token for the cobalt. Um, and this is shown. Uh, it's at the moment it's green. If we click that, um, it shows that the uh, character or the the NPC is unidentified, and it shows it as an unidentified creature. And this is also reflected. Uh, in the player's version of the combat tracker, it shows them as an unidentified creature. So this is useful if you, uh, if the player characters haven't seen this particular creature before, or you don't want to give too much information away, then you can make the uh, NPC uh, unidentified. Obviously, you would do that before making it visible, otherwise you kind of give the game away. Um, now once you've got one NPC like this on the combat tracker then you can put several more in. You can um, obviously just drag in some more. Um, but what you can also do is you can just drag and drop uh, the ones that are already on the combat tracker to duplicate uh, exactly the NPC that you've got. So once you've got one on you can just drag and drop within the combat tracker and that will give you uh, multiples. Uh, you'll see uh, also that the uh, creatures have been given a number. We've got unidentified creature 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, and we'll come to uh, look at this a bit more detail when we look at the options that you've got. Um, but each creature uh, of the same type uh, is given a, a different number. Now if we uh, select one of these uh, unidentified creatures, um, Whenever it's selected on the combat tracker, then this uh, window uh, opens up, which only the DM uh, sees. The uh, players don't see any of this information, as you can see. Um, the DM only sees this information, and this gives us details uh, of the uh, creature's attacks and any various uh, traits and actions, etc., that it has. You can also see that similar to the PCs, you've got the reaction box, you've got its initiative in AC and speed, um, and there's various other things. And all of these things are linked, so if we wanted to know what pack tactics was, we can just click this link and it'll open up a little window telling us what the pack tactics are. Um, we also can go directly to the NPC sheet by uh, clicking on this and it will tell you in more detail and of course we've got the notes and we've got the image and of course we can share that image with the players etc. 
Um, so whenever the uh, creature appears in a combat or whenever it's their turn, this opens up and therefore it's immediately available to the dungeon master so that they can make any of the relevant attacks or whatever. Uh, as you can see when we mouse over uh, any of these things um, it highlights it on the combat tracker and that means that uh, there is an action which the DM can perform um, with that number or numbers or effect or whatever it is, saving throws, etc, etc. Uh, all of these things can be uh, dealt with uh, from directly from the combat tracker. We don't need to see the NPC sheet. We can open the NPC sheet if you like and you'll see exactly the same things here. Uh, if we mouse over these things then that's essentially what's being shown on the combat tracker. Uh, in the same way that the NPCs have uh, all of these little symbols, the uh, sorry, in the same way as the player characters have all these symbols, the NPCs also have them. So you can uh, look at what the uh, NPC is targeting, you can uh, make it target something, you can clear its targets, and you can also see various information about it as well. So if you needed to, the COBOL needed to make a dexterity check, it can be done uh, from the combat tracker by just double clicking on the decks. Uh, you've got the same uh, th th uh, size and reach uh, for the NPC as well and you also have uh, the effects window as well uh, which you can open up and you can add in effects directly or any effects which are on the uh, creature you can see them uh, and again in the same way as for the uh, PCs you can hide those, um, set them to uh, skip a turn etc. Um, so let's get uh, rid of these uh, NPCs for the moment. Um, another method, um, and the most common method probably, uh, for getting NPCs onto the combat tracker is via an encounter. Uh, so if we open up the encounters window here, we've got uh, an encounter ready. Uh, we can open this up and we can have a quick look at this and you'll see that um, there's a banshee here, some, some goblins and a mage. And we can also see um, that the banshee here has been set to neutral. Uh, the goblins have been set uh, to their default which is going to be uh, hostile and the mage is actually set to friendly. So this can be set in the um, encounter uh, as well as setting it uh, once the NPCs are on the combat tracker. You can also see that there are some ticks underneath the goblin and the mage and that means that these have been pre-placed uh, on, uh, on a map whereas the banshee uh, doesn't have uh, that, it's not been placed on the map. So if we open up our map here you can see our player characters already already on the map and when we place our encounter now by uh, selecting this little button down at the bottom here, the uh, NPCs are placed on the uh, combat tracker and at the same time uh, they are placed on the map. Or at least the ones that are uh, actually have been pre-placed. So the three goblins and the mage have been placed on the map. There's the three goblins and you can see there's the mage but the banshee uh, is not on the map yet uh, but it is on the combat tracker. Uh, and you can see also uh, that the mage is visible because it's been set to friendly. The goblins are invisible because uh, they has been set to uh, unfriendly. And also the banshee is invisible on the combat tracker. If we have a look on the uh, player's uh, view uh, of the combat tracker here, uh, we can see that the mage is visible but none of the other NPCs uh, are yet visible. Uh, if we have, we have a, a look at the uh, the map, oh, let's go to all, oh, that's the easiest way to find it. Um, and we can see, uh, this is the player's view of the map. Uh, they can see themselves uh, and they can see the mage, but they can't see any of the other uh, creatures, uh, mainly because the goblins are invisible and the banshee uh, has not yet uh, been made uh, visible on the combat tracker. We can also see that in this um, uh, encounter here, we could have made these creatures unidentified. So if we uh, remove this for a moment um, and we make the 
their goblins uh, unidentified. Uh, when we uh, place them on the combat tracker, they go in as unidentified creatures. We've now got duplicate banshees because we didn't remove them, and we've got duplicate mages because we didn't remove them either. Um, our menu option here, uh, delete from tracker, deleted. we only deleted foes. Uh, we should have gone and deleted all non-friendly. The mage is still here, but we can delete him uh, like so. Um, okay, uh, so let's go and add this encounter back in again. Um, this is what we have set up now. We've got some invisible unidentified creatures. Uh, we've got a mage which is uh, on the combat tracker and is friendly to the PCs. And we've got a banshee who is on the combat tracker but not yet on the map. Now it's very important that if the banshee here is going to be involved in any kind of uh, combat or anything like that, uh, and the PCs are going to be using the map to do their targeting, the Banshee has to actually go onto the map in the same way as all the other creatures have gone onto the map. Uh, so this is one of the uh, things which a lot of people uh, make a mistake with, is that uh, if you're working on a map, if you're going to be targeting on a map, then the creatures, including the player characters themselves, must be placed on the map uh, via the uh, combat tracker. Um, so the procedure is to get your PCs onto the combat tracker, get the NPCs onto the combat tracker, and then everyone from the combat tracker onto the map. And that's the only way that uh, targeting, etc., and movement, and all the other things that you can see on the maps, which we'll come to later, uh, actually work properly. Um, now again, as we saw in the first video, you could use these uh, buttons down here to place all of the NPCs on the map. We don't need to in this the case because we've already pre-placed the encounter. But if you had uh, just placed the NPCs directly onto the combat tracker, not from an encounter, or not from a pre-placed encounter, um, then you can use these buttons down here to um, drag them in. And we can do this, in fact, for the neutral NPC, for the Banshee. Uh, we can just uh, drag that in and drop it. We could, of course, have just dragged this uh, symbol here and dropped that. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate that uh, these buttons work for uh, the other kinds. So uh, now that um, you know a bit of conversation has gone on, we want to make these things visible. So we can then uh, just click this Show All NPCs, and all the NPCs then pop up both on the combat tracker and on the map. And if we look at the player screen, you can see now that the players can see all of the uh, creatures both on the map and on the combat tracker. Once on the combat tracker like this, if the uh, players um, somehow identify the creatures or whatever, then this uh, unidentified uh, can be uh, changed. Uh, and if you uh, identify one, then it identifies all of the creatures in the same class. So uh, they can't just identify one goblin, they've identified all of them. Uh, similarly, of course, you can make the uh, Banshee unidentified as well. Uh, and then at some point, if uh, combat gets or things get to this, this stage, uh, then you can then decide that the uh, mage has turned hostile and changed their status to hostile. And the Banshee can also be changed to hostile as well, so that now all the NPCs uh, are now uh, hostile to the uh, characters. So I think that's uh, enough for uh, this video, uh, and in the next one we'll look at some of the uh, options uh, for uh, showing information on the combat tracker to the player characters. Thanks for watching!